Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. Hold on. What the fuck? World of Tanks? Arnold Schwarzenegger is in the World of Tanks? That doesn't shock me. Oh. Yeah, that, that's what it's called. Fucking, they call it, it's literally called Prop Night. Hey there, guys. Jubilee here again. Welcome back to the play and chat. We got Straight Level Fox here, and we are missing Super Pixel Dude because he said he hates us no more. He's donezo. So, there's no more of him. Well, that's too bad. So, today, today is a very special day. Not only do we have Gmod Prop Hunt on the background, but we have some very important things to talk about. We've got the Game Awards to talk about. That happened. A lot of shit came out. But before we talk about that, I got some corrections to make. From the last podcast, I said some little things that were here and there that was just a tiny bit wrong, or that news that had come out just right after we've talked about it. First correction would be GTA Remastered. What I said was it was probably fine. Turns out GTA Remastered, not too good. The game is severely hindered by its graphics due to AI upscaling. All three games are foam ports of the classic GTA games, and they have just lots of issues. Crashing from getting too fat, boot up problems, rain filter is overlaid by roads, ocean, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not a good remaster. You can just emulate the old port. Go ahead and do it. It's a lot easier. And then RE4 VR, I said it was going to be the most lack... This, sorry, it's the version that's going to have the least amount of stuff in it. Turns out I was wrong. They came out with news. They're going to be putting uh, Mercenaries mode back in. So probably at the end of next year, in 2023, RE4 VR on the Oculus 2 would probably have everything it had as it originally did. So it would be just like every other version. Just some... Missing lines of dialogue. That was the corrections. Gotta criticize each piece of gaming uh, gaming development artwork. Yeah! And development. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Well, before I get into the big blazing announcements of everything that was announced for Game Awards, uh, let's just talk about how we've been since the last time. How you been? General Fox, what's up? What's up with you? Um, just doing more game research as always. Uh, did some more trailer reaction videos to DNF Duel because they've got damn, they've been pumping out uh, character trailers like fucking hotcakes. Yeah, they're like, Jesus. They're three second character trailers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want. I don't know whether to be concerned or excited because if they're pumping it out this fast, I wonder what the hell is going on. Um, I will say it does look interesting from the footage. That it looks like it's a mix between, like not gameplay wise, but like frame rate wise, like how like everything's rendered. It looks like it's in between Guilty Gear Exert and uh, Guilty Gear Strive, where they're not Which going like cool. like it's still got the anime aesthetic, but it's not like sixty frames a second, like super beautiful animated like um, Strive, but it's also not like nearly almost anime like like dbz fighters or uh guilty gear exert it's a little weird i like it's not bad at all though it's like yeah still got the uh arc system touch looks good right it's pretty interesting um hopefully they'll show more in terms of uh game mechanics so that way we can see what what uh is actually capable in terms of combos because uh, when they showed off those trailers there wasn't really much in terms of movement and um that's yeah. what one of uh, Maximilian's videos was saying was that uh, there's not really too much in terms of movement, but I did notice some interesting uh, cancels that people were able to do, um, as I've explained in uh, my separate videos for DNF, that um, there's like multiple special cancels. So it looks like it looks something similar to where you can do your um, you can just do EX cancels after EX cancels. But then it looks like you have like a uh, a red super EX cancel. Um, it's almost kind of like a like, Street Fighter Four type of thing, right? Right, right, yeah. But uh, with with Street Fighter Four, it was more of like um like a hit stun. Yeah, um, and it also wasted your meter too. Right, and I'm pretty sure that that's what uh this game is going to implement too in terms of it's like you know being able to cancel is we probably have some meter in which we can do cancels with it. But the fact that you can just do like a special red cancel 
at almost any point in time of your combo. That's pretty interesting. So I wonder what that opens up in terms of um, uh, in terms of combos and uh, maneuverability. Mm. So yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Um, that's and I've been looking up more gameplay for uh, Sifu. Um, I believe it ended up getting pushed back again. If I'm actually no, I'm probably mistaken. Um, but uh, they've definitely showed more mechanics in terms of how the game was put together, how they actually hired someone of uh, that knows martial arts and went through the whole motion capture. So that was pretty interesting. How um, each each movement was implemented into the game and how it'll reflect uh, within the game your options and being uh, being able to use your environment to interact with enemies around you. Um, they put emphasis on not being surrounded by a group of enemies, which makes sense. But yeah, that was pretty cool as well. Um, So they got uh, Chuck Norris and they put his fucking corpse on a stick and just puppeted it around. Got it, got it. Yeah, man. Gotta bring Bruce... Uh, we gotta have some of that Bruce Lee DLC costume. <laughs> Bruce Lee ex Chuck Norris again? Fuck yeah, let's go. Yeah, just gotta rip off all of his chest hairs. <laughs> that debuffs him. <laughs> <laughs> Debuff Chuck Norris by ripping all of his chest hair off. He goes... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But... Um, so, there's also more news about uh, Forspoken coming out. Um, more news in regards to uh, Prag uh, Pragmata. Disappointing news, in fact, that it's been uh, being pushed out to 2023. Yeah. So, I've... I mean, that much of it kind of sucks. But, uh, I mean, if they're taking more time into making the game um, look as it is for the recent trailer that they had announced for the pushback, I'd say... It's definitely worth it because it looks like uh, the engine that they're using, I forget what it was, but whatever they're using, the skin tones look absolutely amazing. Like You can actually see like pores and stuff on the uh, little girl character. Oh, for uh, Pragmata? Yep. It's the same engine, RE engine. Pretty good. It's pretty good. Again, I, and, I do uh, like their RE engine. They've been using their RE engine for everything. It's crazy because it's, it's gone from first-person shooter to a... 3D hack and slash game to also help make uh, Monster Hunter Rise, and then also with the uh, uh, Ghosts and Goblins game, so it's also can be used for like a 2D engine too. So it's like it's Ooh. a pretty it's a pretty crazy system they made for the RE engine. I like it a lot. Right. And then I also followed up on some more news with uh, um, Ash Evil Dead. Um, Bruce Campbell was doing a little bit of a interview with the developers for the game. Oh, that's right. I missed it. That was today, wasn't it? Or no, that was, uh, I think it was yesterday. I think it was Friday. I think, yeah, I think it was yesterday. But um, yeah, uh, they were talking about it a little bit and uh, just the mechanics and the different types of um, ash that you can play as in, uh, while playing through the game. So there's not just one type of ash. There's, uh, there's different uh, classes of ash. Okay, because really I've known there's two. Because the um, if you look through the uh, game store, you can see there's the um, Army of Darkness Ash, and then there's the TV show Ash, which is the like, older one. Right. So yeah, so it's kind of cool that there's going to be different classes of Ash. So I'm wondering if there's going to be different classes of the uh, other survivors. Um, Does that mean there could be four Ashes running on the map? Now I wonder. <laughs> 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 everyone's just everyone's Bruce Campbell. Fuck it. <laughs> There's a rip in time that allows us, uh, multiple ashes to be on the battlefield at one time. That'd be There's, pretty cool. Yeah, now it's a new rip. Now it's a dimensional rip where everyone's in the same time frame. That seems to be the basis for all, for all the modern games now. Just have a dimensional rip and you can you can play all all one character with different versions of them. I mean, hey, fucking, uh, what's it called? Witcher 3 just kind of made that more popular, you know? It was just like, oh, look at, why is he here? <laughs> a dimensional rip, don't question it. Ah, it's fine. Oh, man, pulling a, pulling a DC universe here, just a multiverse split. Yeah. But, speaking of uh, nice, high-quality graphics, um, I was also... I also noticed that they released a tech demo for um, the Matrix. 
And so far, I don't know if it was PC, but I saw Max Maximilian playing it too. And yeah, it was for damn, Unreal. it looks good. It was a new Unreal Engine Five, so they actually got an actual game out for Unreal Engine Five. And I was going to talk about that because right. that was announced at the Game Awards. Oh, was it? Interesting. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess I won't try to go any more into it. Uh, let's uh, let's move on. Yep. Not too much has happened on my side. It's just mostly been a lot of work. Uh, I haven't got a lot of time to editing stuff. I know it seems like I'm only putting out podcasts on my video channel, but trust me, I'm I got big projects to work on for the for gaming stuff. It's just hours upon hours upon hours of footage. So putting out the podcast is the easiest thing, just because it's not over like forty hours of footage. <laughs> so it's quick and easy. It's easier, at least <laughs> to say the least. It's easier. All right. So, because most of my time went to putting in together the list for Video Game Award announcements. I'm not going to talk about what games got the announcements, but I will talk about everything that was announced that was at least a new game. Anything that was updated, I don't really care about. So, like, uh, like I said earlier, we had the uh, Forspoken. Don't really care. It's already been announced. So, I'm just going to cover new things. There's a lot of things that have been there. There's just a new cinematic trailer. So, yada, yada, yada. Who cares about that? Let's get into the new stuff. So for 2021, we've got too many games. Here we go. Matrix Awakens already out. Tunic. Where's the sleeves of Link too much? You know, it's just another Legend of Zelda game. Same with another game called T'Chai. Looks too much like Wind Waker. We got Texas Chainsaw Massacre the game. We got Homeworld 3. What the fuck is it? I don't know. It's Homeworld 3. We got Monster Hunter Rise, Sunbreak, and the flagship monster from Monster Hunter Rise. It looked too much like a Berserk reference. I gotta say, it is way too much Berserk. Tell So Games is back, and it's not dead. I'm actually surprised it's not dead. And they are making a new game called The Expanse. Don't know what it's about. It's something to do with a lady. Yeah. Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. It's finally out. It's out on last-gen consoles. It's out on the PS4 and the Switch and PC. Like, fuck. <laughs> Took them eight years, but now we got an actual port that's on modern consoles, so that's good. It's not a dead game anymore. Watch the Bun Men Rise and the Star Wars Eclipse. We got an RPG called Thirsty Suitors. I don't know, everyone's fucking thirsty. They're talking about Exodus. I don't know what the shit that shit's about. But we got another game. You can be a big, strong lady like Wonder Woman in the game. You can also have a nice 2D hack and slash game called Have a Nice Death. We also have another one, Sonic Frontiers. Looks like Sonic 06 Part 2. We got the phone version of Rocket League called Rocket League Sideswipe. We got two artsy looking games. We got Somerville and we got Planet of Lana. We got a sweet body horror looking game called Slitterhead. Looks actually pretty cool. I have no idea what's about though. It's just one big fancy cinematic trailer. Looks neat. Another, another survival crafting game called Nightingale. We got Warhammer Space Marine 2. Looks cool. That's all I got to say for it. Among Us VR. Why even bother with Among Us VR? You can just make VR chat. Honestly, everyone's been doing Among Us in VR chat. It's whatever. But that just says jobs are open. Is it has? I don't know if it has something to do with all the employees leaving Activision. Mm -mm, but they have a lot of job openings at Bethesda. I could do something with that. We got Medal of Honor Above and Beyond. It's only on Oculus Quest 2. So that's two games that are only on Oculus Quest 2. We got Medal of Honor VR and we got RE4 VR. We also had Kojima. He also announced Nightmare Alley is going to be out this Friday, December 17th. So his Kojima's first movie is actually going to be coming out relatively soon. Same with The Matrix Resurrection. It's going to be a week out after that, which is December 22nd of this year. We also have a game coming out. It's going to be not coming out next year, but in the new year 2023. Alan Wake Part 2 is coming out 2023. The game that also was announced was Pragmata, as Street Double Fox said. It's going to be delayed for 2023, unfortunately. But... It's just the way it goes. We also got Sons of the Forest Part 2. Or sorry, Forest 2, which is also known as Sons of the Forest, coming out May 20, 2022. And a joke made by the Super Best Friends years ago about a wrestling battle royale game comes true with Rumbleverse. Looks pretty goofy. It's coming out in 2022. Don't know much about it. We also got a bunch of another games coming out here in 2022. I'm going to go blaze right through. And we got Lost Ark, Lord of the Rings Gollum, Evil West, Metal Hellsinger, Steel Rising Suicide Squad game. We got Cuphead DLC, Dune Spice Wars, Star Trek Resurgence, Plague Tale, Requiem, Crossfire X, Saints Off Planet, Star Wars Hunters, and the Halo TV series. Are you able to breathe yet? Yes. <laughs> <sighs> We're trying to get oh, that man. ready. Uh, that was that was all the new stuff. That wasn't even covering all the old shit they even bothered to have out. <laughs> I was gonna say that is a lot. Yeah, that's why I like wanted to blast through it as fast as possible as I like, did. We can be here till er way early in the morning, and I don't want to. <laughs> 
Uh, well, uh, was... funny thing was, is, uh, I was actually catching up on part of the, all the announcements that they did for the, for the Game Awards. <laughs> well, I caught you up on all the new stuff. <laughs> yeah. Woo, there's a lot. Well, anything you want to talk about in the, all that huge ass list I just fucking blasted out of my ass? Yeah. Um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the yep. game. I wonder if it's going to be anything similar to, um, I feel like DVD. I, actually, yeah. Um, I don't know, because it was just one big trailer, so it's like, yeah, I'm interested too. I have no idea what it could be about. It seems cool. Right. It seem it seems like it might be the same sort of line where, um, you know, you got your one guy that you're trying to run away from. So basically, like the uh, DBZ fight, uh, DBZ, um, uh, the breakers, where you got like one dude trying to chase you down. And you got to try to escape. So I don't know if that's going to be like a new upcoming trend that's going to be happening, but so far, I'm I don't know how to feel about it. I mean, the fact yeah. that we only got the cinematic trailer, it's like, uh, okay, you know, it, that's there. But until we see more gameplay, then, you know, it is what it is. It's like, okay, well, it's there. Pretty much. That's what I'm saying. It's like a lot of it was just a bunch of fancy cinematic trailers, which is like, that's why I can't really comment on a lot of like the games, because it's like, it's just cinematic trailers. It can be anything. Like that's what Game Awards always done. They put their best foot forward by look saying, "Look at this amazing gameplay." It's like, well, there's nothing to it because there's no gameplay. Because it's just cinematics that makes it look nice. <laughs> I mean, some games had like some very small snippets of gameplay, like Warhammer Space Marine. It had like a very small right. snippet of gameplay in it, which is like okay, yeah. But it's like things I'm really interested, like Slitterhead. It's like that seems fucking cool as shit, but. Ain't no gameplay. You know, you know what that kind of reminds me of. It kind of reminds me of um, the anime Parasite, where uh, yeah, where they all these guys get infected by aliens and then all their body parts turn into like you know monstrous sort of things. But uh, instead, um, yeah, I don't know. Like <laughs> I can't really say much more than that. It 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 seems like the um, the uh, anime Parasite turned into a video game. So. Be yeah, I'm super down. Looks super cool. Cause, uh, I wish I had joined here to remind me because we watched, there was a Netflix movie where it had something to do like that. It was really fucking really? cool. It was just like a bunch of body horror things and it's like you had like the special squad. It was a weird movie because it was like, it was a really weird movie because it's like, yeah, once you die, then you get, you go into like this weird other kind of like reality where you have to like become like a ghost or like a slash demon slayer. Because, like, a lot of the right. the horror things, like, they look straight out of, like, the old, like, Japanese ink, like, myth things where it's, like, oh, you have, like, the the head, like, on a spinning wheel or stuff like that. And it's just, like, it was a weird movie. It was super cool, though, but it was such a weird movie. Right. But, yeah, uh, Slaughterhead seems pretty fucking cool. Um, Evil Evil West seems pretty cool as well. It's almost like it's edgy western. It was like yeah, <laughs> edgy western. It was, That's it's how almost I like it. it's almost like Ash the Evil Dead, but in Western times. That's like right. okay, okay. So then you got like your freaking um, your uh, your uh, what was it? Your your stun knuckles, which is freaking punching demons and shit with uh, electric knuckles and stunning them. I was like, okay, that's kind of cool freaking uppercut one of the demons in the air and just start shooting them with your with your uh, six round shooter it's like oh, okay 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 i see it i see it but i still need to see a little bit more of what it has to offer it's a really yeah, really wonder, short gameplay yeah i wonder if it's actually two players this is kind of seemed to like allude to it it seemed like it was alluding to like hey it's two players look at you have a second partner helping you out it's like is it co-op or no right i don't know but yeah that's yeah, I was going to call that edgy western. I had like a, <laughs> and that whole thing I was going to spew out. I was going to have like quips for everything, but it's like, I don't want to say everything. It's too fucking much. It's Ash the Evil West. <laughs> That's what I was kind of thinking. I was like, this is just like, it's the Evil Dead, it's Evil West, but yeah, whatever. But, yeah, yeah, so. I do kind of, I, uh, I won't comment on Cuphead too much, but I will say it was kind of cute. That I was wondering whether they're calling it Delicious Last Course. I'm like, uh, 
DLC island. I get it. Delicious last course. I'm like, that's pretty cute. It's a good plan. Right. It's, it's I mean, cool. it, it seems... I don't it's know if it was just me, but I feel like they finally implemented the uh, the third player. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I've been out of the loop too long, but if I can remember correctly, it's been always two player up to this point. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they must they must have finally introduced Miss Chalice in the new DLC. Yeah, I thought she was, was gonna like, just be like a a choosable character. Like you can be like, oh, which one of the three characters you want to play? Like kind of like a a Super Mario two. Well, honestly, I thought she was gonna be in implemented into the game um, way earlier than that, where where you had the option to play three players. I was like, huh. Well, we're but after now. a while, yeah, I guess better late than never. I will say that I don't know if you caught that when I was saying it uh, about uh, Rumbleverse. Did you see that at all or no? Um, I think I might have seen a quick glimpse of it. So uh, yeah, there's an old channel out there. Me and Jun used to watch them all the time. Call Super Best Friends. They had a on their podcast years and years ago, joking about like, oh, what if there was like a a wrestling battle royale game? It's like. Someone finally did it. It's called Rumbleverse. Yeah, it's a it's a wrestling battle royale game. Oh, f- <laughs> you go around, you do a bunch of wrestling moves. Like they, literally, people are suplexing, doing body splashes on the people. It is a fancy oh, cinematic trailer, but it's like it's like all right, all right, you got my attention. They finally <laughs> did it. I'm fucking down. Let's fucking go. Let's go. <laughs> you just gotta suplex a person, and then there's the hype for you. Suplex, suplex, suplex. Seems cool. I was like, yeah, let's go down same with well, uh, alan wake part two i'm actually surprised they're actually making a real sequel to alan wake two yeah i'm surprised as well the fact that there's going to be a second alan wake granted i never played the first one but the concept of it was kind of cool you got to use your flashlight to kind of you know um take away their their shadow and, and then you can fucking destroy them yeah but, um, i mean what's it called um Alan Wake's American Nightmare was actually okay for like a standalone DLC thing. It was it was fine. It was just kind of dumb because I couldn't. I never owned it as a kid, but then I beat it later. I think it was just a couple years ago. It was just like, oh, it's one of those things where it's like you, because you're collecting pages, but it's like you're also like looping through, like you're trying to build a script. So it's like, oh, you found the next part of the page of the script. Let's start back from the beginning. Go through it again. And try to find another page of the script. Oh, you found another page. Okay, let's start back from the beginning. Go through it again to get to. It's like it's it's it was all right. American right. Nightmare was okay. It, Alan, it definitely makes Alan Wake. I need to play Alan Wake again because Alan Wake was a really good game. It's just American Nightmare DLC was a uh, it was all right. Right. Uh, and other news. To, um, going with the uh, the Game Awards. I need to do some research on Sonic Frontiers because for some reason I feel like the graphic design seems similar to um, uh, Sonic 06. The new Ratch- no, oh. to me it seems like the new Ratchet and Clank. To me, dude, it screams Sonic 06 so much. Where it's like, look at this cartoon character with all these realistic environments. It's like, oh no, is this going to be another train wreck? I fucking <laughs> hope so, man. We haven't had a Sonic 06 in fucking... 14 years. Let's do it. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I guess the closest track we had was, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, Sonic Heroes or Sonic Forces. Right. Sonic Forces is pretty bad. Right. So, I mean, I'm curious to see how the new Sonic game is going to turn out. Um, and then we got the Suicide Squad. So I was... Looking at trailers of the Suicide Squad, I mean, cinematically it looks good. Gameplay, I was kind of concerned because I'm hoping it's not like an online own, uh, online only thing. I have no idea because it kind of like just the way they're shooting the trailers. It reminded me a lot of the Guardians of the Galaxy game that came out not so long ago. Right, right. So, I mean, looking at the Guardians of the Galaxy game, I was I was iffy on it, and then looking at the new Suicide Squad game, I'm. Um, it's kind of put me on that same boat. I was like, okay, not quite as what I was expecting. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't even know what I was expecting. But I guess I was just building myself up for like way too much, and so I guess it kind of put me in a sort of, uh, eh, it looks, it looks okay, sort of state. 
Yeah. Uh, what I'm surprised about is the fact that Genshin Impact is still going, considering at how crappy its uh, um, its multiplayer implementation is. I wonder if they fixed that. I don't think they ever you, did. You and your friends got to be the same level in order to join the same world. From last yeah. I heard, it's a lot of the new characters that have come out. It's just basically like pallet swaps of like older characters existed. So it's like their movesets haven't changed. Their specials haven't changed. They haven't really done a whole lot of like new, new stuff. It's like, okay, so I don't really care. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fact that you mentioned that, yeah, kind of put me on the same boat. It's like, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, hey, more porn. That's all I can say. More people are people really love those characters. It's it's basically Overwatch too. People love those anime characters. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah. Looking into it, um, that Rumbleverse. Oh man, <laughs> it looks super goofy. Told you. Told you. It's like <laughs> yeah, I'm down. I'm down. They finally did it. I wonder. I wonder if it's gonna be another thing where it's like a free to play game because a lot of the uh, Battle a lot Royals. of the uh, battle royals are like free to play. Yeah, very few of them are actually like pay to play. Where it's like, uh, was it? There's a couple of them. Where it's like you have to actually buy the game to play battle royale. Like uh, Population One is one of them. It's like, right? Uh, it's like I don't know. Want to pay thirty bucks just to play battle royale? <laughs> right. There's there's some other ones I can't think of what they're called at the top of my head, but there's a couple other ones like that. I guess no, no Warzone's not like that. The game's optional. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the game is optional. But you know, if you're gonna make a battle royale where everyone has to has to play online in order to be able to play it, you might as well make it free. Yeah. But yeah, uh, those the uh, that wasn't announced though. Like I also mentioned with Sons of the Forest, and it was coming out in 2022. Yeah, I finally watched that trailer you were talking about. Yeah. It does seem more gun oriented. I do like how the fucking the lady that has the three arms and three legs, because I knew I always known she's going to team up with you and whatever. I just find it funny how you can also give her a shotgun and a pistol and she dual wields both of them. Oh, that's pretty right. funny. I like that a lot. It's pretty goofy. What seems cool though, it seems like the uh, those weird monsters are coming on more into like the mainland because they make it seem like there's two other guys there. It's like the guy here's like, son, get down or whatever. It's like, huh? <laughs> it seems like they're like they're going off that little island, and like, on, or I guess it'd be past those icy mountains in the first map. You know? Right. Huh. It seems cool though. I'm down. Yeah. Seems it seems pretty interesting. It's like, uh, yeah, pretty much the forest, but now we got more guns. Nightingale though, I, I don't know. Nightingale's like whatever. Yeah, Nightingale's... Uh, More Minecraft. Ooh, I don't really care. Right. Don't don't really care. We, I got Valheim. It's fine. And then there was... Um, Saints Row 3. Or not Saints Row 3. Um, the Saints like Row 1. Yeah. Yeah. The, the reboot. Remake Saints Row of Saints. Yeah. So, I mean... Well, I mean, it's it's Saints Row. <laughs> That's yeah, all much. I can say. It's Saints Row. It's it seems like Saints Row really wants to go the route. It's like Saints Row through. They want to go big on their first reboot. It's like, hmm, right. I feel it's gonna be even more short lived than the original Saints yeah. Row. Yeah, because Saint, there's a reason Saints Row three went so fucking hard because like they wanted to go really goofy compared to one and two. Right. Oh, I should, I should yeah. say more goofy to one and two. Honestly, I think the third was was at its peak and then that was it that that was pretty much it for me i was like uh okay you know i'll just leave it at that all right but i, mean, I honestly feel know, that like, way since row four was definitely okay right i was pretty disappointed with saint row four i, I like, remember oh, well, i remember i just... rented it from a red box i beat it i 100 percent of that game in under 24 hours it's pretty much reused all the same assets they pretty much reused all the same assets, so it's like, uh, well. They built off of the Saints Row 3 DLC, where it's like, yep. you get the superpowers. It's like, yep. what if we give you, to, people love that, let's just make it like that. It's like, all right. Yeah, so it's like, uh, okay, you know, that's that. 
But other than that, I don't really care too much. <laughs> yeah, speaking of something we don't care about too much, Jump Force, you hear about this? Our beloved, beloved game, Jump Force. Who the gonna fuck be... hears about Jump Force? <laughs> it's going to be taken off the digital storefronts on February 7th, 2022. Holy shit! <laughs> it's doing that bad? <laughs> yep, the server is going to be shut down on August 24th, 2022. Jesus Christ. So the the weirdest part that sticks out to me when I was reading this article is that it says that online battles will still be available after the end of the online service. Huh. I don't know what that means. Weird. It's like can you still do online battles after August 24th? I don't know. It the uh Bandai worded it extremely weird, but I mean like yeah, Jump Force is going to be gone. Bye-bye. Game sucked. Who cares? <laughs> oh man yeah i don't know if you ever caught that that came across uh between the last podcast and this one i was like that's pretty funny i mean i knew it wasn't gonna be too great from the start i was like i took one look at jump horse i was like uh yeah it looks okay looks like uh, a little bit less than okay honestly i was like uh, i feel like this game is gonna it's gonna flop and sure enough it did See, I think it would have done a whole lot better if it had a uh, Berserk. Just like Monster on the Rise. God, dude, I couldn't fucking get over that when I saw that Sunbreak trailer. I was like, Jesus Christ, how much more Berserk can you get with that fucking... The dog they showed off in that trailer. <laughs> it, the That dog had the most Berserk armor on its whole body. It was like, oh, Jesus, man. I mean, I ain't gonna cry about it, but I'm like, yep, yep. So we're gonna probably get, like... Once you kill that monster a couple times, you're going to get something really close to Guts' armor in that game for the DLC. <laughs> it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. I don't know if I'm going to put time into actually play it and get it, but it's going to be cool regardless to see people be like, I got that Parker's armor! <laughs> oh, man. Well, um, because I don't know if you caught what I was talking about real quick when I was using the whole game announcement things was Bethesda opening all their job positions. Because you heard about the whole Activision thing, right? I honestly haven't. Where, like, the CEO of Activision has been, like, called out for, like, all, like, these heinous things. It's like, yeah, no, that company looks really fucking terrible now. And Nintendo's like, yeah, we're not, we make sure our companies don't do this. And we're thinking about terminating our, our cooperation with Activision and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, all those things that have come up with the CEO of Activision, not so good. So, like, Bethesda's like, oh, hey, we've got all these job positions opening all of a sudden. And it's like, I think it's just so they're like, hey, Activision employees, come over to us. We got we got positions you can come and fill. So, wow. the only reason I bring that up again is because uh, Streamlabs. I stopped using Streamlabs. I went back to OBS Studios because, honestly, I think OBS Studios a lot nicer just because it supports more platforms for streaming. But, um... Turns out Streamlabs was this was a, announced a while ago. Streamlabs has been copying uh, companies for years. Streamlabs has put the title OBS at the end of their software, even though they didn't have, even though they have no affiliation with OBS. So it's they literally had the name Streamlabs OBS for the longest time, and OBS said, "Please, no, we we don't want anything to do with you guys." So they've been doing that for years, even though they've been told no. They finally got called out about it and. They took it out. Now it's just called Streamlabs. And their website, um, Streamlabs, they have, uh, it was some of one of their new things. It was the way the layout was for their whole website, along with their policy agreement, was nearly one-to-one -one with a different company called Lightstream. And it was just like, it's a big thing. It's like, gosh, Streamlabs seems kind of scummy. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean... So far, I've been using Streamlabs and hasn't really given me too too many issues. So yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, it's not people like having issues with it. It's just people having issues with the company themselves. It's just like I don't know right. if I want to have a company that's just been lying for all these years. They're like, oh, we we do all these things, for blah blah blah. It's like mm. that's right. what's making people un unease. Which is like, you know what? It's fair. I don't do a whole lot of streaming myself, so it's like, ah, I don't mind going back to OBS. It took me literally right. a minute to set up everything in OBS. After I just figured it out in Streamlabs, it was, it was pretty easy. Right. Um, but going back to the uh, the Rumbleverse, um, I'm on their web page right now, actually, to sign up for the beta. It is going to be free to play, so. Nice. Nice. 
So I figured as much. But uh, it's nice to see that uh, um, most of the free-to-play games are all going to be uh, uh, non-subscription based because uh, as long as I think as long as you have a subscription to like actual online play for consoles, then then you know there's that. Right. Hey, what was that game called you were talking about earlier before the podcast started? Uh, that oh yeah, uh, Red Out Two. Red Out Two. Yeah, so they announced Red Out 2. Um, it looks it looks good. I'll say that much. All, all the oh, environments. Oh, I see. It's it's labeled out like, um, was it Wipeout? I see. Yep. So, let's see. Let me look at the gameplay here. Uh, yeah, it looks very Wipeout-ish. Right. So I was like, okay, okay, I can, you know I what? See, I've been yeah, I can see where you're looking... going up with F Zero because that's the whole point of Wipeout is that it was already F Zero like, right? Okay. So I was like, okay, so I was like, okay, I can, I can get behind the behind the wheel of this. Uh, you know, I've been looking for a pretty fast paced racing game, so I think this might satisfy the, uh, um, the craving for it because uh, we were playing uh, Grip. But it didn't turn out to be so great. Just because of the way the tracks were, it was really hard to turn. And the um, once you were sort of messed up on the track, it was kind of hard to get yourself oriented and back into the uh, into the race. Whereas with this one, um, pretty much just a straightforward shot. If you run into someone, you're going to get screwed. So you got to make sure you keep up with the pace and, uh, and make it to the finish line. Right. Well, the only reason I wanted to bring that up was because there's a man on Twitter. His name is Aaron, A A R O N, Aaron Max sixty four, and he's making a cel shaded game that looks really similar to F Zero X. It's called Aereo GPX. It looks really sweet. It looks really fucking <laughs> sweet, honestly, because it looks like the dude's making like a really nice looking version of F Zero sixty four, and it looks really really cool. You know what's really cool that they needed to announce at the Game Awards? <gasps> oh no! <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got, I got to show you this footage. He, he, he put uh, gameplay on uh, YouTube of his own little game. In the first three seconds, he already broke his own system. You hear <laughs> people like how like to like fucking like damage boost into like maximum speed already instantly. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, this man knows what's up. This guy is an F Zero player for sure. You just only play like the first like five seconds. You see exactly what I mean. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cute looking. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, he's in. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, that's so cheap. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. That's Aaron, pretty. F- Aaron Max sixty four. Fucking cheap. Oh my god. Can, uh, can you literally just do that at the whole freaking, the whole freaking thing, the whole track? It looks like it. Jesus Christ. Uh well. So like I was saying, case, like I was um, saying, everyone, uh, if you're definitely interested in uh F zero an F-Zero game that's made by, like, a super indie dude, and he, he's modeling really heavily after, like, F-Zero 64, uh, F-Zero X, and it's like, yeah, it's called Aereo GPX. I'll put a link in the description on the YouTube video, because, man, that's funny. I like how he even broke his own system. It's like, hey, 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 guys, you can just do this shit. Just like, Brrr. it's like, oh, God, fucking. <laughs> this guy knows what's up. This guy is an F-Zero player for sure. He knows. He knows. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Man. Uh, but you're saying with cool, Game Awards? Though. Oh yeah. Um, I was gonna say uh, they should have announced a uh, buck up and drive. <laughs> yep, yep. I was gonna say that since the last time I talked about it, buck up and drive has officially come out. It has come out. Oh indeed. wow. Yep. Is the whole? I think it's like 1.4 edition. Yep. It's, it's a good game. You can make your own custom skins for the cars. So it's like, if you really want to, you have to go to the you have to go through a little bit of digging game files. The guy has it on his webpage where it's like, oh, this is where the files are. And you just draw over the own files or like 
if you want to like photoshop over like the the files and make like your own car so you can be like a hentai car or whatever it's just <laughs> whatever whatever it's, it's all skins for the cars you don't care as long as you as long as you have fun with the game i think that's the most important part because it's still pretty fun he he's definitely changed the cops are a lot harder to deal with in in the full release and demo i had huh that's fucking it's, funny yeah yeah buck up a drive is really fun and aerial gpx now looking at that footage yeah that looks really fun aerial gpx dang well we definitely have a lot of games to look forward to Oof, man that was a lot that was a lot yeah well speaking of the was also part of the news that come out in the last couple of weeks since the last podcast um fans are trying to hunt down a rare bs copy of f-zero gp2 for five thousand dollars holy jeez so do you know what nintendo bs stands for uh no I so do. bs i only figured this out recently a couple of months ago i think near the beginning of this year bs stands for broadcasting system so out in Japan with the Super Famicom, they had a special adapter piece for the SNES. Or if you bought these empty cartridges, basically, you can download uh, rare copies or not rare copies. You can download uh, basically like broadcasted ROM files and you can just put them on the cartridges themselves. And you can just have them in your own homes. So it was like basically the beginning of like... Uh, uh, downloading games back then except you had to buy like empty cartridge for it gotcha right so there was a lot of these there was like games for, like legend of zelda link to the past there's f-zero there's a couple other things so, like, there's a, a couple games where like, they made like special versions of them they made a uh, bs copies i think one of them was pokemon but um the biggest problem with these cartridges that have come out recently is that uh you can only download one custom a ROM at a time and save it for offline play. So if you have only one cartridge and you downloaded a second map or a second ROM onto it, it would delete the first ROM. Wow. So that's why people are trying to like find it for $5,000 because uh, people found footage of it. The footage does exist online. They're looking for this copy of uh, F-Zero because there's a couple of maps that they're online, but no one seems to have a copy and the hardest part about this is that these cartridges are known to have bit rot. What bit rot means is like, yeah, these cartridges are not made to last. So the longer they, so the longer time goes on, the worse the code gets. So it's gonna be like almost irrecoverable to actually like get a hold of these maps. Wow. So it's it'd be cool. I think I know I know companies are really fucking defensive like oh we don't want roms or anything but it's like when knowing this now that there's like bit rot in fucking cartridges it's like yeah actually having all these online is actually more important than ever because then we're just actually losing history due to horribly manufactured games back then that we couldn't predict that they just have degrading code now it's crazy right uh speaking of more cool games um uh, you and me had gotten to play the new game for VR um, after the fall. Game holds up. Yep. Game holds up pretty, pretty decently. It's pretty good. Honestly, it's, yeah, the more I look at it, which I think we have to get way more into it, I, yeah, it really does feel like they wanted their inspiration to be just Killing Floor. They looked at the Killing Floor insertion and they're just like, yeah, we want to make a, a really good version of Killing Floor VR. Which honestly, um, I uh, I was grinding a little bit on it because I felt bad because you were talking about hey you didn't have an AK and that second level wasn't providing AK so I went back I got you one, but um, oh. but it definitely does seem like yeah that game is um once you get more into it it definitely is more akin to like um using the faster reload system where you just swipe the gun at your uh, chest to reload instead of right. putting the clip in manually because like yeah there's no time to like take the clip out put a new one in and then shoot again it's like no yeah if you want to dual wheels and go crazy on the hard difficulties you're gonna definitely want to go to the easy reloading system it definitely feels like it's more uh, meant for that 
Well, I was gonna say, I think if you, I think if you do the manual reloads, it gives you like more credit. No, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, you definitely get right. um fifty percent more credit. So you're actually getting instead of one hundred percent money, you're getting one hundred fifty percent money. Right, right. Yeah, so that part of it was pretty was pretty good. But I mean, if you're saying that for the harder difficulties, yeah, that that would make sense because being able to move and gun on the fly it takes a it takes a lot of work. Yeah, because then you can double gun it, so it makes it a lot easier. Because there's you can't double gun and reload with the the harder reload. It's like it's not possible. Yeah. You just can't. Yeah, because you literally have to like take your thumb off the uh, left the left stick, be able to eject it, and then put in the new clip while still moving, which is impossible. Um. Yep. Yeah. The biggest so problem for I, me, it wasn't uh grabbing it wasn't uh, like letting go of the stick it was grabbing the clip because where they mm -hmm. it sucks i tried adjusting it so much you can't is the fucking the gun holsters are so fucking close to your your um your ammo belt that i yeah i, I keep grabbing the other guns on accident it's like fuck i want to reload not grab the other guns it's like right no, it, it definitely is a nice thing for normal mode but after that it's like no you you just can't you need to just go in yeah, because uh, those those monsters they're in your face, and that that was the kind of thing that we were talking about too. We were a little bit afraid that um, that the zombies were just look like they were moving way too slow. But I think they just did that for like uh, gameplay purposes when they were showing the trailers. Yeah, that was so, definitely normal modes because when you go into hard difficulties, it's definitely just like a killing floor where it's like, oh, once you play killing floor on hard mode, then it's like, oh yeah, they're they're matching up with your speed pretty easily. Instead of just kind of like walking right. all the time. Right. And that's that's pretty nice because then it actually gives you a challenge. It definitely, yeah, like we were saying, feels like Killing Floor or Left 4 Dead. It looks, it feels good. It feels pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's actually really good. And I don't get any motion sickness from it. So that's good. It's right. definitely not Arizona Sunshine motion sickness. <laughs> that game was, that was the roughest first game. But it's good to know the second game is really nice. It's good it to know is. that Vertigo doesn't live up to their name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doesn't give me Vertigo this time. That's good. That's good. So uh I guess uh, as a as a bonus uh, um for all your people that are getting uh the Oculus Oculus Quest this uh this December um they're act what they're actually doing is um Metaverse is um they're doing a special deal where if you're doing referrals for friends uh during this whole month you actually get sixty dollars instead of thirty dollars for each Ooh. referral yeah so i was like oh man maybe we should have waited but then again you know we wouldn't have anticipated that we would have gotten an extra 30 bucks if we had waited yeah i mean hey at least we got the uh what's it called after the fall basically for 10 bucks so that was good yeah yeah that wasn't bad so that was that was pretty cool we ended up so i guess the other thing that we could talk about is is oculus is um uh, terms, uh, terms of service, yeah. Terms of service for the uh, for the referrals, man. Their uh, their terms of service are not clear. Thankfully, I was able to get the both of us the uh, the thirty dollar referral. I think we talked man, about this last time. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, we talked about it at one point. I don't know. if I'm pretty sure it was just off re uh, off the record. I can't remember. Yeah. I thought it was in the last podcast. But yeah, Maybe. it's not good regardless but um yeah hopefully this, hopefully metaverse is uh is nicer and they'll change the terms of service and make it more clear right well speaking of meta um don't forget they're actually making the haptic feedback glove for ar and vr that's right mm -hmm. um seeing the little pulsating uh inflatable stuff on the fingers it kind of weirded me out I, it looked to me i don't know why but it kind of remind, reminded me of like suction cups for like octopus i was like what the hell it looks like section cup fingers no because i know it was like i wonder how that's actually going to feel in real life and you're like oh it's not gonna be like actual like knife stabbing you which i was joking saying like it wanted it real no the, the one thing i really do want there in the haptic feedback love which i highly doubt is the one the one feature that's in the ps5 controller that i think everyone turns off is um the adaptive triggers if they can have that onto the haptic feedback glove, i think that'd be really neat like adaptive like fingers huh. so it's like it actually feels like you're actually gripping something 
That'd be pretty cool. I think that'd be really neat. I don't think they would, but I think that'd be really cool. Because, again, I don't know how that shit works in the PS5, but it's fucking neat. I hate it, though, because they people make like, oh, look, it's like a real gun trigger. It's like, I don't care. Just let me shoot. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's like, um, if it's going to be like for like a glove glove, it's like, I think that'd be kind of neat. That'd be way more immersive. Nah, man, you just got to... Um... You gotta think further into the future, like you were like you were talking about. Just inject Xenobots into your bloodstream, and then uh, you can feel everything. <laughs> okay, well we're gonna talk about that again. Let's talk about it again. So, <laughs> so Xenobots, Xenobots, Xenobots. Uh, I actually looked into this. So Metal Gear Solid had nano machines, and they couldn't anticipate they'd be called Xenobots in the future. The reason they called them nano machines is because I looked it up. Nano machines, the the um, the thought process for it was actually invented back in 1964. So people thought of actually having nano machines for the longest time. It was just so such an outrageous concept that they were nowhere technologically close to even be able to make it. So now they have a thing called Xenobots. So. Xenobots are the first self-replicating robots that kind of look like Pac-Man. They are made with extracted frog cells from an African frog called the Xenopus Lavius and with an evolutionary AI algorithm. The scientists wanted to make a kinematic self-replicating cell. I tried looking it up. Kinematic is not a word, but what I believe is that it actually runs on kinetic energy. So the more it moves, the more it's actually automated and it just keeps going. So it's somehow got like an infinite power supply in it they didn't really go into how much this little robot works because i think it's just kind of more on the confidential side but they also um they're also using this ai to help find uh, sorry yeah a little, uh, little flustered here because it's, like, it's just such a crazy idea that we're actually like this far in the future to actually have something like nano machines actually exist now it's fucking insane so the way they were able to make this is they used the AI to help find which cells would help in the self-replicating process. And they found a cell which would be th- this African frog. And it somehow also ended up choosing a design that looks similar to Pac-Man, which is a little weird. So the way these Xenobot cells work is that they move on their own. They gather as much s- small cells in their quote-unquote mouth region and they make a baby Xenobot within it. And then this baby, this baby Xenobot actually starts to then move on its own. It gathers cells, becomes a little bit bigger, and then it makes more Xenobots. And then it keeps continuing the process. So then just more and more Xenobots keeps, keep being made. Although the thing with it is that it's not been tested out in nature. They are hoping that they can help deliver these drugs faster throughout the body systems to helping, hoping to actually use these in like a vaccine process so then it actually helps people's bloodstreams out body system whatever and so on and so forth they're also using this ai that made the xenobots they're also helping it speed up vaccine development processes like if there's like another uh pandemic was going to happen so it's uh it's real interesting it's fascinating that we're like really close in the precipice to um actually having like nano machines in real life Oh, man, you're just eating. You're just gonna be eaten from the inside out. <laughs> it eats all the good cells. It's gonna eat it like Pac-Man. Yeah, that's why they. That's why they're exactly wanting to test it out in nature because I think that's like the biggest problem is that they haven't figured it. Out. It seems that like they made the self-replicating oh, process, but they haven't actually like tried to actually like see if it's like can self-maintain itself. God, yeah. I can just imagine it looking like fucking the. Uh the uh whatever the animal is just disintegrating just fucking it looks like the flesh eating virus bullshit just your flesh is melting off just i mean uh, probably because i mean the closest we've had to these were i can't remember what those one robots were called but like they eat all the oil that was spilled out into the ocean i forget what those things were called but that was made years ago so it's hmm. like yeah it's it'd probably be similar to that inside of someone's body but i mean it's crazy that we actually have like self-replicating little robots now now we just need uh, garbage eating robots in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. They eat all that garbage. I mean, hey, you think they can, right? Because technically, I would hope. I mean, th- those aren't cells, though. 
that's technically that's atoms. That's um molecular structures that are just different. Yeah, I guess those aren't really cells. Probably the right. food garbage that's thrown out into the ocean could probably do that. Hmm. Right. I don't know. Well, then again, I would feel like all the food garbage that's uh, in the ocean would eventually just be, uh, just I don't know, turn into to uh, Mush other and, things because of, yeah, yeah, because of it, it would degrade. Yeah, right. Well, that's the thing too, because was it plastic technically does degrade? They only found they did the fucking research on it. It's like yeah, it degrade after a thousand years, so not exactly the fastest. After a fucking thousand years. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't exactly degrade the fastest, but it does degrade. Uh, and the only thing that it's degrading is my mentality. It's stupefying how long it takes. Yeah. Well, speaking of future stuff, which was, I thought was pretty cool earlier this year, too, was that researchers in Singapore made a soft polymer foam that acts like a self-healing skin for robotic limbs. So I thought that was also pretty cool. So, um, you just got to stick styrofoam all over your prosthetic limbs. So, yeah, they said robotic limbs. I don't know if this means just, like, for heavy machinery or this is actually for, like, yeah, like, um, metal, um, like, robotic, um, metal replacements for, like, uh, body parts or anything. Well, it was supposed to be styrofoam, wasn't it? It's a self, it's a soft polymer foam. That's how they describe oh, it. Oh, soft polymer foam. Okay. And so it's like, I don't know if it's used for, like, heavy machinery, because they just said robotic limbs. They didn't exactly specify, like, what those robotic limbs were. So. I see. Seems cool. Seems cool. It's just the fucking hook hand. <laughs> it's just a hook hand. We haven't gotten that advanced yet. We we're still working on the uh on the uh the fucking hook hand. Working on the kinks. Oh man. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, man, yeah, it's gonna... cr- it's crazy to think we're like so close to the future. It's probably going to take like another decade and we're going to be like right there up with like where we thought flying cars were going to be and like in was it like 1980s? It's gonna be fucking nuts. I'm still waiting on my flying car. God damn it! <laughs> I invested into that shit. <laughs> Where the fuck's my flying car? <laughs> Where is it? Well, I mean, people have already just invented like similar stuff where it's like a, it's basically a hang glider, but it's also like a uh, a plane. Oh, I so see that. You, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's like. Well, at this point, we might as well just create, like, fucking landing zones for everybody, so that way everybody can have free flying. Yeah, use all the... I mean, it's not a bad idea, too, what they're doing. They're just using a bunch of old technology and just, like, putting it together, and it's like, yeah, we can kind of, like, engineer something modern-ish. It's like, yeah, right. that works. Right, that makes sense. Right. So I was like, okay, cool. So the, uh... The, um... The... The uh, quote unquote hang glider is essentially um, just uh, they just added a cockpit to it. <laughs> That's pre- pretty much it. They added a cockpit to the hang glider and then off you go. And they put a putt putt engine on it? Yeah. Putt 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 putt. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's those, uh, it's that steam powered uh, 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 putts. There we go. <laughs> Well, speaking oh, of putt putt engines, I'd like to see come back would be in Pikmin. And speaking of Pikmin, Pikmin Bloom. I haven't talked about that. Yeah, I have been playing Pikmin Bloom. Um, thing is, people do play Pikmin Bloom where I live. They just don't play it where I work. No one plays Pikmin Bloom where I work. <laughs> so um, the game is a glorified. Oh, fucking play that shit at work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the game is a glorified pedometer. Uh... Um, it's gained very little traction since it's come out, but people aren't surprised since Pokemon Go was Niantic's big hit, and they don't see a second one making a really big hit. Um, so I did look this up. People can make 30 pick coins a day by planting flowers. Uh, it seems really hard because I've only made about three to seven coins every weekday, so I have no idea how you're going to make 30 a day. It's fucking ridiculous. What but, um, the hell? Um, I actually recently uninstalled the app because apparently in bigger cities, people can follow these flower trails that that people make because the flower trails are actually updated live on the app. So it makes it really easy for stalkers to follow other players. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so apparently people in bigger cities are actually having stalkers because they're using these 
flower trails to actually follow people around to see if like the natural walking patterns and see like after that if they go home or whatnot. It's like ah, that's not good. That's that's a no bueno. <laughs> the antics. You've got some explaining to do. Yeah, they're up to. Look. Yeah, they they got some no good antics. Look, the antics got some no good antics up their sleeves. I'll tell you what. Look, man, we were just trying to make money. We didn't intend for this to happen. Well, it happened, bitch. Time to pony up. Oh man. Yeah. So that's that's the only reason I stopped playing Pikmin Go. It's like ah, that's not good. That's no good. No, man, he's just trying to help you earn your coins. <laughs> he just wants a walking partner. I uh, should have known. Should have known. <laughs> he just wants to trade Pikmin with you. Ah. He was a nice guy. He just only looked creepy from a distance. I'll trade you one Pikmin for this uh, for this knife wound and 200 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fair trade, fair trade, fair trade. <laughs> Well, speaking of knife wounds, Squid Game. All those good old knife wounds in Squid Game. There was a person on Twitter who's she's being fired because her title was called Squid Game. Oh yeah. god! The, the, the biggest, <laughs> they the got biggest, co- they got copyright patents on the name. No, the biggest problem with her it's because it's like a big thing, and I think she's American. And it's like she's being fired over her Twitter handle being Squid Game. The problem was is that her her Twitter name's been Squid Game for over a decade, so her name's been like this even before the TV series came out. So. Oh, yeah, it's it's very unfortunate that people are now looking at it like, oh, that's you just copy- weird. Like, oh, you just copied it, blah blah blah. Uh, she did change her Twitter title. I'm not gonna call her gonna out. Just- if people want to look her up, then you can. But it, I mean, she's doing better now, but still, it's really unfortunate that she lost her job or. Um, I think she was about to lose her job because of it. It's like, it's it's ridiculous. That's weird. That's really freaking weird. Well, I mean, I guess until someone puts a copyright patent on the name, then... See, it wasn't you know. like she was being sued over it. That's the thing. It was just that she was being fired over it. Her boss was like, oh, you, you have your name is Squid Game. You're going to lose your job if you have a Squid Game. It's like, what? Man, fucking, it's crazy. That, I don't know if, well, then again, jobs can fire fire you for pretty much almost anything. I know, um, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I don't know, at that point, I'd probably be looking for another job. Because, I mean, if they're going to fire you over the fact that your Twitter shit was just, it had the name for Squid Game then there's something really, really off about that job because they're grading you for your for your work ethic and your, rep, uh, 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 what was it, uh, rep, reparability, I think is the word. Something like that. Um, it makes me think, case, though. It's, it's, it's like it has nothing to do with their job, yet they're getting scolded and... Um, they're getting their job on the line because they have that name. So yeah, it just goes back to the, to the point that I was going to, that I was making out that I'd probably be looking for another job because for one, I know that jobs have the right to monitor your, your social media. So that way as to maintain reparability. Um, but sorry. Uh, but, um, the fact that it has nothing to do with their job seems really ridiculous. Yeah. Well, because I was actually thinking, it's like if she's had her game like that for over a decade, I wonder if her name was only Squid Game, because she was probably uh, referring to uh, Splatoon. If she's had it for over a decade, it's possible that she played Splatoon back on the Wii U. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Maybe no, but sorry. Again, I'm I'm probably overthinking it. No, she only copied it because of the, the <laughs> TV show. Fucking lose your job, fucker. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's yeah, that's definitely a new time low for for that specific company. Yeah, well, you know where I'd want to work. 
I want to work with the team that's making Earthworm Jim <laughs> 4. Oh. <laughs> Miko's still dead. But since then, <laughs> the 3D TV series Earthworm Jim Beyond the Groovy will take its place, featuring Jim and two younger companions on his wacky journeys. Well, that's pretty... At least there's that. I mean, if we don't get the game, at least we'll get the TV series. <laughs> I think Beyond the Groovy is going to be really fun. I think it's going to be a really fun series. People, Did they man. say what they were going to be showing it on? No. I don't think or they... Gonna be premiere on? I don't know. I don't think they announced what's going to be premiering on yet, but I think they just wanted to announce that it's actually going to be a real thing. I just find it crazy that people... It's the same thing like it's always been. It's like, if something's not the way people will remember it being, then it's instantly bad. It's like, Jesus Christ, you guys gotta fucking just roll with it. I know Teen Titans Go was nothing like everyone wanted from Teen Titans. Stick out your ass and, and, and accept changes. Right. Stick out your ass and accept changes. Then, I mean, okay, so that's like super arguable. When they when they changed the Teen Titans to Teen Titans Go, that was that was huge. That was huge. It went from it went from like ser- uh, serious um, uh, uh, skits to freaking just like. It went from teen serious to like uh, teen comedy. It was right. Sorry. Yeah, it's teens. It's teen serious with comedy to kid comedy. Yeah, I was like, well, that's pretty. It's understandable, but at the so, same time, I, mean, I went back to the original Teen Titans. It's like there's a lot of episodes in the original Teen Titans that really just kind of suck. It's like Teen Titans wasn't super good, but it wasn't. It wasn't like it was terrible. But it was good still, but it was like there's a lot of episodes. It's like mm, that was okay. Right. Yeah, but I guess they wanted to focus and capture more the audience. Yeah, because I will say though, even though Teen Titans Go was still made for kids, there was still some episodes that were just kind of funny, even though it's like they're poking at themselves, like, "Oh yeah, look at this self-reference joke," because we know we're not that good. It's like, it's like at least they know how to have fun with their own series, because they know it's not going to be like the original. I, I think it's just people right. just got like. It's just one of those things people always say. It's like, you just got to roll with it. Same with the new Earthworm Jim. Yeah. It's like, it's not going to be anything like the original. The original's still there. It's not like they're taking it out from your hands and saying you can't watch it anymore. You can still go back and watch it. Nothing wrong with that. Right. Yeah. Either way, it's all so, going to be good. I mean, right. I'll definitely be interested in seeing um, seeing Earthworm Jim. Because uh, I think I remember playing... I can't remember which which game in particular it was it to me it felt like it was like on a game boy or some shit the, at least the graphics looked like it because it was like side scrolling um but uh it might be yeah. awesome, Jim. Uh, I, i'd be pretty interested to see i'd be pretty much interested to see what they got going on right well speaking of going back and watching stuff i also what i also did was that I went back to watch the 1986 Super Mario movie called Super Mario The Great Rescue of Princess Peach. So uh, this was something I was going to mention in my week. But the reason I also want to put it in the news is because some dude actually went back to get the film and upload it on YouTube. And I think he used a little bit of like AI was like correction. I can't remember what all he did. He did some things to correct it so it looks like it's not like a bunch of burnt out film. So you try to like restore it as much as possible, which is incredible. It was um, it's really amazing too. Uh, the the movie you replaced the you huh? just got to replace the uh the uh, actor with the uh the Guardians of the Galaxy guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he dubbed over the whole thing with Chris Pratt. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I th- I think it was really interesting because this movie because I had to look it up. And I was like, I was like, when did this movie come out? I'm like, was it out before My Brothers Two? Because there's a lot of things in it. I was looking at it, and it's like, actually, this movie came out two years before Super Mario Brothers Two. It's really crazy because there's a lot of things that Nintendo would either take from the movie or they think that they implemented themselves. And it's like, they actually existed in this movie years and years and years ago. It's fascinating. Like, there's a. Uh, Different pattern, Koop, uh, different pattern Koopas and Toads. There's the flying airship slash the sunken ship, which can be seen like in Mario Brothers Three and the, the sunken ship from Super Mario World. You get the colossal blooper, 
you got giant flying Koopas like you'd see in Mario Brothers 3. You got the basically the prototype version of Magic Koopa and a, a Wiggler. It, it's crazy. It's like, wow, all these things that existed like in Mario games today. It's like it's been in this movie since like 1986. It's it's crazy. It's really mm. it's cool because like the character archetypes are totally different in that movie too. Was like Mario is kind of like a a little bit nervous, not kind of cowardice, but a little bit more nervous. But he also is courageous, and Luigi is definitely. It's really weird because Luigi in that movie he's portrayed as more like, um, I guess more like self centered and looking more for money, kind of like Wario instead. It's really it's it's odd. It's crazy. I find it so fascinating. Nah, he then has a personality split and splits himself into uh, Waluigi. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, but, the, uh, the Super Mario movie, it's it's really cool. The only thing that's hard about it is that it's all in, all in Japanese. YouTube does its best to like um, auto-translate it to English. So if anyone wants to watch it, you can watch it. It's still a little hard to understand because the English isn't exactly one-to-one because the the auto-generated ai text breaks every now and then but i think it's still pretty watchable isn't it's definitely interesting what i'm kind of uh skeptical about about the uh new the new super mario movie with chris pratt is i wonder if they're gonna try to do it in a sense where like hey we know that you know this isn't exactly mario but we're gonna throw some funny bits into it to you know lighten the mood but i'm wondering if they're gonna do it too much that's what really worries me is how much of it they're actually gonna like try to turn it into something funny that they just kind of forget that it's mario yeah i don't know i guess we'll just see same with the uh sonic 2 movie right well i mean granted that the uh the new sonic movie with uh you know the first one um with uh, with jim carrey I don't know if they made a movie before that, but um, uh, that one was pretty good in itself already so far. If they can just do uh, uphold the sort of same thing with uh, part two, then you know that's pretty cool because mm-hmm. uh, they're getting the original voice actor for actually no the TV series um, voice actor for Tales. Yeah, for I was Tales. okay. I was wondering. I'm glad. I'm glad you looked up into that because. I was listening to Tales, I'm like, that sounds like TV Tales that I remember. It's like, yep. Yep. Which makes it yep, really definitely. odd, because I don't know how to feel about Knuckles. It's really weird. Right. I mean, it's cool that they have Knuckles in there. It's cool that we actually get to see Knuckles. No, yeah, I don't have a problem with him being it. I mean, like, his voice actor. Right, right. It's like, huh. It's because he's black. I don't like no. him. No, <laughs> no, no. No, but no it's, man. You just got to re- replace him with Terry Crews. <laughs> there we go. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, yeah. I think it's just because it's not what I'm used to. Because, like, I think, because, like you said, it was um, it's the original Tales. I think going from, like, the original Tales to dr- straight into, like, a new Knuckles actor is, like, I, th- I think it's just something I'm not used to because I'm just so used to the Knuckles voice actor that I've been listening to for like years and years. So it's, right. it's a little odd. Um, I think it'll be fine regardless. I don't, I don't think it'll skew my thoughts about it when I actually see the movie. It's like, I don't know how to feel about it now, but I don't, I don't think it'll really change my opinion when I actually see the movie, though. I think it'll be Damn. fine. Damn. Now, I don't, I don't fucking know why, but now I want to go into the, like, the trailer for Sonic and just fucking replace... Um, Knuckles' head with fucking Terry Crews' head and just be like, bah! Double Sun Power! Uh, oh, man. That'd be way too freaking good. Oh, man. But yeah, it's cool. It's cool that Jim Carrey's um, freaking uh, was like, yeah, you know, I'm ready for the second movie. You know, he was willing to up- uphold the role for Eggman for part two. I was like, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. The only now, thing he has I, to say about it is that he didn't come back before Christmas. <laughs> oh. Because that, was the, that yeah. was the end quote from right. the first movie. I'll be back yeah. before Christmas. And it's like, well, it's past Christmas. Schmucks. <laughs> oh, well. Right. Oh. No, he said he'll be back before Christmas, but he he didn't say of which year. 
Oh. But it's coming out like in March, February? I forget. Actually, yeah, that sounds about right. It's, well, I think, it's like, of, I think it's like well, that's before time. Christmas of next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, that's it's pretty cool. So I'm wondering if if they're going to introduce the other characters like Shadow the Hedgehog. And... I don't think so. Cause it, it seems like they're going with the movie logic where it's... Um, or sorry, the movie logic. They're going with the game logic where the first game, it was just only Sonic... And then they tease right. Tails, and then when you go into Sonic 2 with Tails, um, mm-hmm. you actually do fight Knuckles in Sonic 2 in the original game. Right. Because he, he does, because was... Eggman does trick him in that game. So it's, I think what they're going to do is that if they make a Sonic 3, is that mm-hmm. then it's going to be like, oh, Sonic with Knuckles, and then, then possibly they're going to introduce more of the characters. Honestly, what I'm thinking with Part 2 is... Freaking Sonic's going to be fighting Knuckles. Um, uh, the truth is going to be exposed. And then they're going to be... Uh, all three of them are going to be together. Uh, Knuckles, Tails, and Sonic. Oh, yeah. And then what's, I think what's going to happen is um, Sonic's going to be like, well, now that we know that Dr. Eggman can you know, come back from the, from the ring portals, I can no longer be here. And so he'll just throw like a ring portal and just go somewhere else where Dr. Eggman will just try to hunt him down. Uh, hunt him down. I feel uh, like that's... That's how and it's then, gonna play out. Then they're gonna go into like the other like Sonic lands and yeah, yep. I, I can kind of see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that happening, and then maybe maybe that's where like Amy gets introduced, right? Because then that's where probably Eggman's gonna find the Chaos Emeralds. Because what's was shown in the movie was the Master Emerald, which is from uh, the Sonic games too. The Master Emeralds, like Master Emeralds, basically Chaos Emerald. It's just a really big version, which is the right. one that's shown in the movie. So. I think, right. yeah, I think you're probably right, because that's where he's going to probably try to find the Chaos Emeralds, because it's another source of uh, energy. Yeah, and so Sonic is probably going to say his goodbyes with uh, with Donut Lord there, and uh, and him, and then I think I think that's how it's going to end. Say goodbye to the Endless Possibles, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, uh... I may have just spoiled the whole movie. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's no problem. I mean, I spoiled the whole movie for Joel and for uh, Detective Pikachu before the movie came out. Oh. <laughs> because I I took a guess and said, like, oh, it's probably going to be just like the game that came out before the movie. Sure enough, it was just like the game that came out before the movie. Where yeah. It, it was like, oh, look, it, my dad was Pikachu, but he don't have his memory. It's like, nice. Why don't you release right. the game afterwards? Fucking... Jesus, the game was a big spoiler <laughs> before the movie came out. Right. Uh, <sighs> but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's that's how it's gonna end up. Freaking, freaking. Uh, they, they're gonna go to the Sonic worlds and they're gonna uh, introduce some of the new new characters. If there's gonna be a, possibly be a three. Yep. Yep. Well. So, uh, I think that pretty much covers everything for news. Uh, I'll have one last piece of news before we go into the topic, which um, I think this will probably be near the end of the podcast because it's like you were saying, like I have played more prop hunt games, but it's like there's only so much I could talk about because prop hunt is kind of... I, I just, pro, just prop hunt. Yeah, I say it's almost <laughs> kind of like self... I say it's, I think it's kind of like all self-contained within itself. It's, it's kind of hard to say anything else about it, but... um. Last piece of news I have is uh, Microsoft. They imported 76 games to Xbox One slash Series X. The main reason they haven't done it, the, they haven't done more games, is due to legal issues. Like, it's just like licensing, uh, legal and technical constraints. So it's like I'm sure like some of it's like has to do like music or like companies that mean like part time partnerships don't actually have like those partnerships with Microsoft anymore. So. It's the reason we haven't seen a whole lot of more like backwards compatibility games come back onto like the online store for um, Xbox One stuff. Right. But hey, we got 76 more games there. So the uh, backwards compatibility list has gotten bigger. So maybe in a couple more years, we'll see it get even bigger and bigger. Nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. Have more backwards compat games. Um, but, I mean, you know, that's with Xbox since since playstation is more of like uh you know out with the old in with the new um i mean it's good 
good that we have have a PC because then you know we get to experience those those sort of like Microsoft games. So that part of it's nice. I mean, but PlayStation has been kind of doing that. They've been uh, importing a lot of their uh, PS3 games, and you can just download them onto your PS4 slash PS5 now. Right, and because you know, because um, they're I wouldn't say they're kind of like disbanding the the PS Now service, but they're kind of making it to where it's like, oh yeah, you can just like either get the PS Now service and you can stream all the games on your PlayStation 4 slash 5, or you can just, like, buy the game outright and just download it onto your PS4 and 5. Right. And so far, that's, like, a lot of PS1 to PS2 games. I think like, they're trying to get the PS3 games on there now. So, it's pretty cool. Right. I'm glad, I'm glad companies are trying to, like, put into our hands, like, okay, if we're going to take out ROMs, then we need to do it ourselves then. So, at least they're trying to take initiative, which is mm-hmm. good. They need to. Yeah, so I mean, looks promising. So, so yeah, we got tons, tons, and tons more games, tons, mm-hmm. tons more games for options, and that's always, always good. It's always good. And then, so yeah, um, I guess on to prop hunt. Yep, on to prop hunt games. So, G Mod, eh? What's up with that bullshit? G Mod's a bunch of bullshit, eh? And fucking 2009 piece of fuck, get that trash out of here. No, thank you, ma'am. Don't want that here no more. Now we have a new, uh, a new prop hunt game called Prop Night. It, ha- it has Dead by Daylight mixed in with, uh, with, with uh, Prop Hunt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what better to trick the uh, enemy than to be a prop? So that way you can work on those gens. Oh, man. It looks so fucking cool. Oh, my God. That shot looks fucking good. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's going to make me cube. I pay like five jinkies. <laughs> yeah, I pay five jinkies for that, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, but uh, I mean, uh, they've had some previous sort of uh, um, prop punk games. So stuff like um, uh, this is a, this is a really really old ass game. It's called uh, What the Box. And everybody's a box trying to do like a battle royale. They're, you're you're literally a cardboard box amongst oh, I forgot about other that cardboard game. boxes. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. The game hardly anyone ever talks about. It. So yeah. it's like, yeah, well, there was there was something like that. But honestly, not too many prop hunt games. But again, um, I think we've mentioned it in some of the other podcasts if we haven't before. Uh, Midnight Ghost Hunt. Uh, yeah, I believe and... that. That's like the next the best prop hunt game. Yeah, and that's what I was going to try to talk about because I was looking up into like the whole prop hunt thing, like where it started. Uh, originally, where prop hunt games started from was actually not surprising was G mod. It actually started from um, Counter Strike Go, which is Global Offense, which um, people have been modding that game like crazy, and so a lot of that stuff was imported into G mod. So G mod technically did start uh, prop hunt games, but um uh, i'll briefly break down every prop on game uh gmod it was a uh, hunters must destroy all props if a hunter strikes a fake prop um hunters lose their health so there was it was kind of like um choose wisely and right. try to hit the target but then people figured out i was like oh well we'll just make things it's like oh this is like a fake like your one time like clear the room of like fake props and see if there's any real props or whatever um, it was pretty interesting. Uh, it definitely felt really early, but people made it work. Uh, it was it was fun for a good amount of time. Uh, Black Ops Four had their own prop hunt mode, where hunters must destroy all props, and if you're a prop, you have a limited amount of times you can change, and you can also put down fake props. So if if you're a prop, what you can do is uh, become a prop, put down a fake one, become a different one, and then make it seem like you're uh, you're not that other one anymore. Uh, it was definitely Ooh. interesting. It, uh, you, hunters didn't lose any health if they shot fake props. Uh, that was definitely a big hindrance I had with um, a G mod because it definitely made it harder. Because it was like you could get some health back in G mod, but it wasn't a whole lot because 
every time you hit a fake prop, you always lose five health. And that's out of 100, so you can only hit, like, 20 fake props before you kill yourself. Huh. And Gmod games, they, they fucking fill rooms with props, so there's, like, easily over 100 props in each map. It's like, yeah, you're going to kill yourself before you even find the whole... At least mm-hmm. clear out the whole map. Um, then there's Midnight Ghost Hunt you're talking about, which I think is really fun. There's the the later maps definitely have a lot of props in them, but um, it's definitely interesting because I do like it how it's uh, survived for long enough as a ghost and you can actually fight the hunters. But even right. and they can they they can still fight back and still win, which I think is really fun. Yeah, it's a good idea. Honestly, I feel like Midnight Ghost Hunt is beyond the best prop hunt sort of game that i that i've i've ever played to be honest because it's like it's like yeah you know it's cool that you know you can hide as a prop try to juke people out and everything but the fact that you can actually fight back as the uh as the ghosts as you're like trying to run out the time i mean that's that's insane the fact that you know now now the hunters can possibly become the hunted it really focuses on implementing that sort of like team play style. It's like, okay, you know, everybody has their role and everybody has to like kind of watch out for each other's back because if you make the wrong move, then you could easily just get wiped out within the first two to three minutes of the game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's definitely really fun. I think Midnight Ghost Hunt is easily the best version of all of them. Right. And then the fact that. Uh, like I was saying, each each and everyone has their own role. You, you know, not everybody can be one type of ghost. Uh, similar to like Midnight, or not Midnight Ghost, um, Prop Hunt, where you can only, where um, they've done some mods where like, okay, you can have like a shock ability. You can have like a, um, a, a doppelganger sort of ability. Um, but just the way that Midnight ghost hunt has sort of like intertwined that upon implementing new sort of ideas where you could become a uh like a floating orb where you can reach higher uh, places so that way you're not get uh getting trapped as easily um and then you have i think it was fantasma fantasia no um uh no marasma there we go marasma with the uh I think that's one of the classes where you can have um, smoke. You can have like a smoke clouding ability that actually does damage over time. Mm-hmm. Um, they're still working on working out some of the kinks and everything. So I was like, okay, cool. That's sort of something that I haven't seen uh, Gmod do before. That's what I'm saying. It's like so it's Gmod nice definitely sets the grounds for everything. It's just like it right. definitely does feel limited because it's just so early and it's like they haven't really done anything with it. And it's like Black Ops 4 kind of, like, based their stuff off of Gmod, and it's just, like, it's it's definitely a little bit more than Gmod, but it's definitely not too much more, which doesn't make it really more fun. Right, right. So it's nice to see that um, that the uh, developing team that's working on it, I forget the name, but uh, that they're putting a lot, like, a lot of thought into... Um, how to implement certain weapons and ghosts into the game while still keeping it at, at a surprise in 50 50 percent so pretty much every um beta that i've played so far it's always sat around like that 50 50 percent um and it the fact that they're so consistent with it is really promising so uh like what you were saying yeah it's kind of surprising that they just haven't thrown out the game yet but i mean at the same time it's kind of cool that they're just taking the time to really think about things so that way not some uh, something isn't too, too overpowered and that if it is, they definitely get all the feedback as much as they possibly can from the community in order to make sure it stays around that 50-50. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I guess in other terms of news, I found it kind of weird that... Um, so I was watching some people actually play the... Um, the Dragon Ball, the Breakers, the beta, and they signed up for it, and none of them, so, I I shouldn't say none of them, Uh, a good portion of people didn't get, like, any sort of confirmation uh, email, but were still able to play it. I was like, well, shit, if I would have known that I could still play it, even without getting a confirmation, then I would have 
played the beta. And that fucking but, blows. Yeah, I would love to play it too. Yeah, so I mean, we missed out on a good chance to uh, to be able to play the beta. So that was that's pretty disappointing. That's pretty stinky. But I mean, uh... the fact that people were able to you know play it look like it held up together fairly well. Um, shows some promise to it. That's good. I mean, it's it was funny because I mean, if you have a good enough team, you could pretty much just fucking slap slap the Raiders' ass and just completely completely demolish them. I was so, like, okay, so okay, weapon, cool. Okay, interesting. So weapons are that viable, huh? Um, weapons can be that viable. Um, the only thing is, is that. It really, really comes down to you working as a team to be able to, to be able to take them down, because um, you get you get uh, your max level is level two, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So and you have to use Shenron to get to level three, which makes you Goku. Yeah. Right. So literally, I saw three people in I think level two forms trying to take on Cell, and the only so he has ten ten little bars of health. Uh, okay. them ganging up on him only took down three i was like jesus christ and that's level so, two with three people so you need, so uh so basically you need 10 level two forms to take him out jesus christ yeah so it's like okay i i i can kind of get that so you really have to plan it out with your team and actually get objectives and stuff done which i kind of like because then you know, it's not completely solely focused on being able to beat up um, Cell because, you know, that would end the game too quick, which is understandable. Um, kind of like however, how Dead by Daylight does it, right? Where it's just like, oh, you want to try to go for the uh, the cranks to, like, get out the main entrance. Otherwise, you're going to have to, like, try to search for the uh, the hatch. The hatch, right. Right, okay, okay. Um, but if you do manage to summon Shenron and your Goku, man, you... You beat Cell's ass. You beat his ass. <laughs> like, so it kind of goes off of the Xenoverse um, play style where you're able to sort of dragon rush the enemy. And it sort of sets him in a, um, a sort of stun lock. And if you can work together as a team, you'll easily just slap his ass. Yeah, he, oh, okay. he'll, he'll easily go from, from 100 to, to 0 in almost like 3 or 4 minutes. If if you can manage to work together and just stun lock him, and it's it's not too too hard to do so if you're uh, just if you're based. Goku, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was like, okay, okay, that's pretty cool. So it's not as uncommon for you to be able to um, kill the uh, the attacker, similar to like uh, Friday the Thirteenth since. Nobody's talking about that game where it was super difficult. You had to go through like an Easter egg sort of series to be able to kill Jason. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 But in this one, it's a lot. It's you'll definitely have an easier time of trying to kill the Raider. It's just that you just have to make sure you work as a team to be able to um, to be able to take him down. And then all you need to do is just collect Dragon Balls and simple as that. Collect Dragon Balls, find, uh, find the pedestal, summon Shenron, and you got Goku. Hmm. So that was pretty interesting. Um, as for the mechanics, um, they seem to hold up pretty well. Like I was saying, there's, uh, nothing really seemed too, too buggy. Um, of course, there, I'm pretty sure there's going to be later improvements to the game. But uh, overall, it seems pretty well balanced for where the beta was already. So hopefully they push out another beta not too, too soon. But I definitely would like to try out a second beta if they decide to throw one out there. Right, right. Well, that's good to know. Right. Hey, I know it's not a prop hunt game, but it kind of is like that. It's kind of going off of Dragon Ball Breakers is like a first class. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's really interesting because it's, it's an imposter game, right? But you can also kill the imposters. And I think that's really interesting that people are not making it right. like, more one-sided where it's like, oh, you can only do this and then the other ones can only do this. I think it's more right, interesting right. where it's like, oh, people can like fight back and while also trying to figure out like, oh, how do we how do we do this thing to like, um, uh, solve the game so we can win? So it, it gives people like two 
win conditions right. instead of just the one, which I think is definitely a better way to go with everything. Right. Yeah, so I'm definitely liking all these uh, new sort of uh, ways uh, to combat the uh, the hunter. And so I guess that kind of loops me back to the um, thing with the uh, Texas Chainsaw. I wonder if you're going to actually be able to fight back. Because, um, I mean, there's movies and stuff where people have fought back. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see if if we can fight back against the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, I have no idea. Guess we'll have to find out. I have no idea if it's going to be like a Friday the 13th or something. Right, right. But, uh, but I guess that's more of sort of a side topic to uh, to prop hunt games. The fact that you, you can just fight back. It it makes all the difference, to be honest. And Again, like I, I said, mean, it, it definitely makes the game more engaging than people just like, okay, I found a spot, I sit there, and now I wait for five minutes. Right. And wait. Because then wait, if wait. your friend's being chased, then it's like, well, you can't really do anything other than maybe try to distract him by running in front of your friend. It's like, okay. Because then the Cause other... Then you're, then you're sacrificing uh, yourself yeah. instead of uh, your right. friend, right? Yeah. And, and then on top of that, you get those uh, more advanced players where like, okay, this guy's just trying to take um, take the hit for his partner because maybe they, you know, they relate to him that they're really low on health. Well, now in Breakers, since you have the, um, the ability to actually stun the... Um, the raider and actually do damage to him he has to either focus on you turn uh, turn your focus onto the, onto you or decide to keep that focus onto that uh onto that one he's chasing and possibly kept getting uh keep getting his health just dwindled away because you're taking pot shots at him it's so it forces the um mm. the hunter to make a more more quick choice Rather than it's like, okay, this guy's just taking taking shots for him, uh, taking body shots for him. Um, I'm just going to ignore him. Gotcha. Well, now, gotcha. Right. So it's like now you can't ignore that, that other person because now he's going to be shooting at you. He's going to be doing stuff to stop you from essentially uh, taking his partner away. So it's like, okay, that's that already just adds a lot of element to, to the gameplay. It's like survivors can actually do something to help their... Uh, the partners and that's uh what friday the 13th uh did as well but it's like uh it didn't really make too much of an impact just because of its latency um and the fact that people were just mostly assholes <laughs> yeah that community was extremely toxic yeah so um whether or not the servers are going to be able to back this game up fairly well is all up to the developers and how much they anticipate people to play this game. Um, we'll just have to wait and see, but I'm hoping they anticipate a lot of people uh, playing Breakers because you've got a huge fan base for Dragon Ball just in general. And you've got like some really de uh, dedicated fan base as well. So there's going to be tons and tons of people wanting to play this game. So if they do implement another sort of beta in the future, I hope they implement enough servers so that way everybody can get a chance to play and hopefully they can keep up with the uh, the player base to let them know like, hey, we've got another beta coming up because like uh, like. We were saying it's kind of unfortunate that we weren't able to play the beta and some people uh other people were able to play the beta without even being notified yeah yeah i never even got the notif uh, notification for it so kind of sucks that i missed it right so but so far the game looks like it holds up well it doesn't look like it really lagged too much uh everything seemed somewhat fair it just again depends depends on the player base and uh and how well they're able to implement teamwork and how well they're able to hide as props um i will say that a lot of the props you do get to hide as they seem super super out of place and almost easily you're almost easily able to tell like like if that prop should be there or not 
Because so yeah, far, all I've seen is you can either be a vase, uh, a potted plant, a box, and... A uh, statue, right? I think so. Yeah, the statue. But honestly, I see more people turn into those other three things rather than the statue. It's almost like the statue is a rarity. Hmm. It'd be nice if they in if they included like a sort of prop wheel in which you, know, you have a choice of what prop you are, you're able to turn into. Um, maybe they can implement that to where like you can implement, uh, turn into a certain number of props. So that way is to eliminate sort of like um, being able to, you know, work with such a huge ass wheel. Because if you got if you're able to like transform into a, a million different things, then that wheel is going to be like so hard to get that accuracy of what prop you want to be. But you know, if it's like at least maybe I'd say maybe eight items, I think that'd be pretty fair. Hmm. Because uh, yeah, like I was saying, it it was almost in my opinion, too easy to kind of tell what was out of place. I guess that's a good word for it. Yeah, I didn't, you know. uh, I definitely haven't looked up footage for it, so I wouldn't exactly know uh, what would be like the downfalls or benefits to anything in the, in that game. Yeah, some people were literally just hiding as like potted plants in the middle, like hiding behind a tree. I was like, well, shit. Yeah, I mean, you're easily going to be spotted uh, spotted like a sore thumb because anytime you transform, it's random. You, you don't even get to choose. It's random. Yeah. So, like, so it's like, like, yeah. like you are saying earlier, maybe it'd be a lot easier if you can choose what you can be, but I think at the same time that'd make it uh, more broken. But I don't know. Who knows? Because it, it doesn't seem like hiding is the way to win, right? It seems like you want to leave and escape or you want to defeat um, the raider. Right. Yeah, I'm, I feel like that's what it's more leaning more towards. But it'd be nice to have like, if you had you know had the choice to hide, then you know do it in a way to where you can figure out what you want to hide as. Because if you're just hiding as like uh, a freaking a statue out in the middle of the woods, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Mm. I'm not saying like, oh, you know, transform them into uh, like a blade of grass <laughs> and you got to try to find them, find them amongst the other blades of grass. No, yeah, but I'm right. I'm saying more like, right. Maybe like, maybe like maybe a small bush or like something. A, right, exactly. Because it's like, um, uh, maybe you can throw like some bushes, not not too, too many bushes out in the, uh, out throughout the map. But it's like, you know, if you're trying to be a bush in the middle of a desert area, then, you know, Obviously, you can tell that something's off. Yeah, I know. Because uh, I, I definitely have to look at gameplay to see like, what would be uh, something they could probably try. But, uh, yeah, I really don't know. Yeah, um, I guess uh, off topic in my word and to you, I definitely would look up gameplay for uh, for uh, Dragon Ball The Breakers. Um, definitely some crazy plays in there. So it's it was pretty fun to see, uh, which is makes it even worse that the fact that we couldn't play it because we missed the beta but oh well one of the players that one of the players sense. seduced the raider and then they broke up with him via text message no this no they uh they seduced the developer and then broke up with him via text message <laughs> 10 points to emotional damage he no he no longer has access to the closed beta it's close <laughs> to him now <laughs> uh, there you go, there you go. <laughs> oh man so yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's all I got for prop games, other than prop night. Jesus Christ, man! I can't believe that's a thing. Yeah, it definitely I looks. I can't believe it's actually out. Out. It's actually twenty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> on it the came Steam out. Store. I was like, yeah, it came out at the beginning of this month. So I was like, oh, it's been out. Yeah. So I was like, huh, that's interesting. I mean, it looks like a game. I'll say that much. But the fact that it's also uh, Dead by Daylight, I think it's going to be very niche. Yeah. Well, 2,000 uh... people rated positively. So there's definitely people playing it. Right. I mean, I've seen some pretty uh, uh, crazy ideas. Um, there's this... There's this one uh, game where you get to play as like... A, it's like... 
like monster movie characters um there's like a wolf there's a puppeteer and then there's a like a almost like a creature from the black lagoon um you're essentially in like a videotape and uh um you have to try to kill the monster right what it was called um but uh those are pretty pretty interesting ideas so i was like okay so a lot a lot of people uh developers are coming out with games where you get to be the monster which is cool but then again i would like to see more games where you get to play as the monster but it's more of like a storyline based game so stuff like uh man eater so you get to play as the shark you 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 are the shark you're the monster um yeah. and you're going around eating up all the people um it's just it's a pretty big disappointment and i'm pretty sure that i've talked about this in the past uh in past podcasts but um it was just kind of sad to see that uh werewolf the apocalypse just kind of turned out the way it was um it was just it, it was a bit of a letdown uh i built up hype for it and i'm sorry for those that i built the hype up for and have let down on that game but it's like man it, it sucked because it went from from uh rated m for mature down to p uh i think it was uh rated uh rated t like a 16 yeah t for teen i was like dude you already just like completely destroyed the game by doing that no it was too edgy we can't so, we don't have the resources to make it like evil west it's too edgy for us apparently so and then the bad voice acting up just added salt to the wound i was like oh man uh, uh, that's just a big disappointment oh man it fucking sucks i can't believe we ended up missing the stupid freaking beta because they didn't they didn't say whether or not that we could play yet other people were just able to just jump right into it oh well stupid. even though we missed that event we won't miss christmas neither will you guys remember this was our christmas cast it didn't really seem really festive because a lot of things were happening at the last minute but hey that's how this year likes to end it they like to throw game awards last minute and throw a shit ton of things near are you still recording before... yeah we're still recording we never oh, got to finish it that's like that's like you already finished it no like you said you we never got to right there. no we were gonna try to then you kept going on about breakers no, well, I mean, I thought I thought you I thought you was like we'll call it good here. So I was like, okay. No, and I, I thought you to, ended it right there. I never had to say my outro. Wow, wow. I never had to say my outro, man. Jesus. I didn't know you had an outro. Can I say it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm kept rambling. I thought you were honestly done. No. Wow, wow. Good thing you didn't say your social security number or anything. Well, this is still going. It's five 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 five. <laughs> but Hashtag yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Remember, guys, this was our Christmas cast. Even though it wasn't very festive, that's just the way it goes. This is how this year likes to end it. That's just the way it's going to be. What the next game is going to be on screen, we don't know. It's definitely Joel's call. We'll uh, definitely have to call him up. He'll definitely let us know. It's going to be a surprise topic. For the end of it, all I know is that I don't know if we'll have time for the topic for the next podcast because it'll most likely go to our top three games of the 2021st year. So I'm pretty sure that'll most likely take up all our time for topics as there will be more news and more things coming out at the beginning of the new year. So remember, take it easy, have a good time, and have a great Christmas. <laughs>